Hey, 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 everybody. Have you ever had a client that drives you insane, that you dread working with, that you just want to come up with any excuse possible to cancel the coaching call or the healing session you have with them? Then this episode is for you. Stick around. You're listening to Marketing Tips with Melissa podcast. <laughs> Welcome to Marketing Tips with Melissa Podcast. And now, your host, Melissa Jakubovic. All right, today we're talking about how to handle a not so perfect client. It's called How to Handle a Not Perfect Fit Client. And I've had clients like this before. And all of my clients have had clients like this before. So I know that it happens, and it's something we don't really talk a lot about. But we're talking about it right now. So, Billy Jean, one of my very old time mentors, he taught me long, long time ago that there is something called the asshole scale. And it's a scale of one to 10. And if your client is above a three on the asshole scale, it is time to fire them. When I learned this, I number one, thought it was hysterical. And number two, adopted it immediately. I started my own business so that I can be in charge of what I want to do, who I want to work with, when I want to do it, and how I feel about my clients. I get to literally handpick who I want to work with. When I'm on discovery calls with people, it's an interview for them to see if I'm a good fit for them, but it's just as much an interview for me to see if they're a good fit for me. And there have been plenty of discovery calls where I don't even offer my package or my program to the person on the other end of the call because it's just not a good fit. And I'll tell you what, this is a great thing to adopt immediately into your business. When you pitch your offer to literally everyone on the phone, what you're doing is you're watering down your quality of client. And you started your business, I know this, because you didn't want to answer to anyone. You wanted freedom. Of course, you wanted abundance, but you wanted to be able to move your business in a way that felt good with you, in something that was in alignment with your purpose. Your vibrational energy needs to stay high in order to do that. And that means that you are allowed to say no. You're allowed to say no to things that you don't want to do, such as getting on a call or signing up people to be in your program. So I want you to remember this and take on this mindset that this is your business and therefore you are in charge. There is nothing worse than showing up dreading what you're doing or getting on a phone call with a client that drains your energy so much that you really start to resent them or that you can't even be paid enough to start enjoying spending time with them. It's a disservice. It's a disservice to yourself because you're not staying true to what you want to do and what you believe in and your gut feeling and your intuition. And it's a disservice to them because they're not getting the great quality care that you provide to people that you absolutely love to work with. So how do you handle a not so perfect client? I actually came up with this topic because I was in a clubhouse room and someone was asking this question. And I hopped up on stage as fast as I could to really tell them my thoughts. Someone was talking about how they had a client who disrespected them, didn't treat them well, didn't pay them on time, blamed them and pointed fingers for everything that they were doing wrong or that things weren't going well in their own business or their own life. I don't remember what the situation was exactly, but they were taking the brunt of it all. And this person was saying, what do I do? I need the money. I want to keep them on as a client because they pay me good money. Well, let me ask you this. Do you want to be a slave? Are you the hired help? Or are you the person that they look up to for guidance because you take them through a transformation and you provide a result? If the answer to it is yes, number one, you are a slave and you are the hired help, well then go ahead and take the abuse from your client. But I'm willing to bet that you go into the second category there, which is I am either the strategist or I am the catalyst to get you to where you want to go. I am the coach. I am the healer. I provide a service that produces a result that gets you through a transformation or a transition and provide you with the tools and strategy you need to get there. 
And if that is the case, then please answer me why you think it is okay to take on abuse. This is a relationship. The relationship between you and your client is just as precious as a relationship between you and a partner or you and a child or you and a friend. Would you take abuse from any of those other relationships? Hopefully the answer is no. And if the answer is yes, I want you to go inside and figure out why that is. Have you been taking abuse in your other relationships? Well, then no wonder you're taking abuse from your clients. But a client relationship that you have should be pure and they should look up to you as the one that is guiding them. They are there because they know that you have the solution that they need to their problem. They should be saying thank you. Thank you for showing me the way. Thank you for believing in me. Thank you for talking to me. Thank you for putting all of these things out on the table and just being real with me. Thank you for showing me what you did. Thank you, thank you, thank you. They should not be pointing fingers at you, blaming you, making you feel uncomfortable, reaching out to you like constantly where there are no boundaries, demanding your time, not paying you on time. Or even if they pay on time, it can really be any of these things. It doesn't have to be all of these things. But if it's all of these things, I'm telling you, fire your client, please. Fire your client. If you have never fired a client and you have a client like this, it is time. Now, I'm not going to speak specifically on the clients that I've fired, but I have fired four clients in my six years of business. And there are many ways to do this tactfully. You don't have to ruin the relationship. You don't have to ruin your reputation while doing this. You can be completely professional and standing your ground. It comes to you setting boundaries and limitations so that you can say, I serve at the highest quality that I possibly can. In other words, serving at your highest good means saying no to things that are not a good fit. And an abusive client, a demanding client, a client that gets a score of four or above on the asshole scale is not a good fit. Want to connect about all your marketing needs and have access to all my free resources? Connect with other health and life coaches, healers, and virtual assistants that support those types of businesses. Join the fun over at magneticmarketingmastermind.com. Now let's talk about, well, Melissa, what if I need the money? Let's talk about it because I know that if you do need money, this is a true concern for you. When you are serving at your highest good, you are serving clients that are in alignment with your energy. That means that they feel really compelled to be around your energy. You feel the same way back. You feel like excited. You feel really excited to help your client. You can't wait to get to the call. You can't wait to talk to them. They don't drain your energy. They boost your energy. They make you feel like, wow, I know what I'm doing. I'm great at what I do. Look at the transformation I created for this person. Look at the transformation this person is getting on their own because of the strategies that I've given them. That is a client who is in total alignment with you. When you are serving a client who is not a good fit, what you are doing is you are weakening your service. You are weakening the potential for transformation that you can give this other person. And you are not being true to yourself. You started your own business to be true to yourself. You started your own business so you don't have to answer to anyone. Now I would say that if you worked for a boss, you were answering to one person. If you work your own business, you're actually answering to many people, all of your clients, all of your team, all of your contractors. But listen, in this scenario where you have a client who is not treating you well, you are not serving at your highest good which means you can't provide your service as well, which means you're not getting any client testimonials or recognition from this client. Also, when you show up and a client drains you so much, you cannot show up as well with all your other clients because you yourself are out of alignment. So when you fire this client, you might take a temporary hit financially, but you clear the way so that you leave room for more people who are more in alignment with your message and your service are going to flood in. And not only that, the universe co-creates with you. So you get to tell the universe what you deserve and what you want. And the universe doesn't know the difference between yes or no. It's following your lead. 
So if your lead is, I only take clients that I know are a great fit, who are going to respect my expertise, who are going to pay on time, who are coachable, who respect my boundaries, and who are excellent clients who actually do the work, then the universe is going to hear that and go, well, let me give you more of that. But if you're going to tell the universe, I accept clients who have money and literally nothing else matters, they can abuse me, they cannot treat me well, they can write horrific emails that take me hours to respond to, not to mention the stress in my gut that I have to go through to deal with it or even get to the point where I'm ready to deal with it, then you're telling the universe, hey universe, let's co-create more of that. So you have to take the first action steps so that the universe can follow your lead and say, oh, I get it. That's what we're doing. Okay, let's do it. If you're not willing to go there, the universe is only going to give you what you're asking for. And whether you know you're asking for it or you don't know you're asking for it, whatever you're doing is what the universe hears you asking for. So if you want to co-create lots of uh, clients in alignment who are going to bring you lots of money and bring you lots of joy, then that's what you are going to get more of. But if you are going to be opening your hands and saying, you want to work with me? I don't care what you bring to the table. Let's go. What you're going to get are people who are totally out of alignment, who don't trust you, who judge your expertise, who make you feel so uncomfortable that you're questioning yourself like, wait a minute, do I really know what I'm talking about? And then you start feeling imposter syndrome. And then you go into that downward spiral that is so messy and very hard to get out of and totally affects your work in all areas. So the answer to the question, how do I handle a not perfect fit client is you don't. You get rid of them in a nice and loving way, respectfully, professionally, and you move on and open yourself up to a lot more success with clients that are total alignment in what you offer. Now, the last thing I want to say is how do you end this relationship? Because I know that some of you keep the clients on because you're scared to end the relationship. You don't know how. You don't want it to mess up your reputation. You don't want to say, oh my gosh, it didn't work out. Does that mean I'm a failure? No, it doesn't mean you're a failure. In fact, what I want you to do is take this as a learning experience and say, these are the six reasons why this client is not a good fit for me and I will never take on another client that has one of these six things or two of these six things or all of these six things. Really important that you use this as a learning opportunity so that your quality of client gets better and better and better as you grow and evolve. So how do we end this client relationship? Well, first I wanna tell you what not to do. You never wanna offend your clients. You never wanna blame them or point fingers back because it's not, oh, well, who he said, she said first or, well, you did it. No, you did it. We're not children, right? If they're pointing fingers at you and blaming you, you stay professional and you take the high road. Never blame them, even if they are at fault. Push the blame in other directions if you have to, but definitely not onto your client. Another thing you don't want to do is get into a long drawn out discussion about the decision that you made. What you want to do is make that decision in advance of getting on the call with them or in advance of writing them the email to let them know. You make the decision and then no matter what happens in that conversation, you already know your decision. Your decision's already made. So you are leading towards that direction. You want that decision to be final so your client can't beg you to stay and then you feel even worse afterwards if you give in to that. So here's what you should do. You should write a nice email and tell them maybe that you have something you want to talk to them about and schedule a call and do it on the call. This works really, really well. Now, if you feel like there's no way I could do this on a call, like literally no way, then I will say doing it in email is better than not doing it. So first choice, get on a phone and call them. Second choice, email. Third choice, ignore the problem. And that's not a choice. Don't do that. It is a choice. It's a choice I hope you don't make. I want you to feel in total alignment with your decisions. And I also want you to build some confidence in your business. So if you're not able to take things off your plate that are not in alignment, then you're not showing confidence. And I'll tell you what, as scary as it might be to head into this conversation, it's going to feel so good on the other side. Like a burden is lifted off of your shoulders. The weight has been lifted and you will feel light and happy and free. Like the chains have been undone. 
So what you can do is you can suggest a replacement, recommend another business possibly, or a freelancer, someone who could take on the work for them. Or you could create a list of things that have not been finished or completed and leave them with that so that they feel like they're still supported. You're not leaving them high and dry. Hopefully you don't fire them in the middle of a very big launch, for example, or something big that they really need help with and you are the support there because that will make you on a, above a three on an asshole scale. So you don't want to leave them high and dry, but you do want to come to a nice ending point and then just say, these are the things that I think you need to continue doing or my suggestions. Maybe it's documentation of, you know, final tasks for something before you just end this relationship. So there's three ways you could talk about ending this relationship. And the first is that you are changing your business direction, if that's true. Of course, don't lie. Or what you can do is you can say that, you know, I've changed my personal circumstances and I'll recommend someone else to take it over to you. You can also say that, you know, this just isn't working for me and I only want to work with people that I feel in total alignment with. So this is just not a good fit. You could also raise your prices. You can quadruple your prices to a point where you know they either won't be able to pay for your services times four or maybe they will and maybe that will bring you enough joy because maybe you can outsource some of it or you know it depends why you're firing this client if you're firing this client because of abuse then it doesn't matter if you multiply your price by 10 then it's not worth it to stay but if you're firing this client because you're doing so much work and they want all of your time and they're not paying enough, then maybe it will feel in alignment if you raise your prices because now you're getting paid for all of the time and now you don't have that resentment. We've talked a lot about the law of reciprocity in a few of the previous podcast episodes, so you might want to go back and listen to some of those where I talk about how it's important for the law of reciprocity to be in full action where you're getting paid what you feel comfortable with so you don't have any resentment towards your client. But if the client needs to go for every other reason, then it doesn't matter how much you charge or raise your price because it's just not worth it. That emotional weight is super heavy and toxic relationships are unacceptable and they can affect your ability to grow as a person, as a business owner, and also to feel good about yourself. And you deserve to feel good about yourself because you're amazing at what you do and you offer amazing services. The people who will take on your services, who hire you for that, are the people who agree that you offer amazing services and they really appreciate everything you do and they come with lots of gratitude and they respect your time and they pay on time. And when you give them good results, they will give you good referrals. An angry client, a toxic client, an asshole client is not going to give you referrals. In fact, they're only going to give you headaches. So I hope this helps, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Marketing Tips with Melissa podcast at www.marketingtipswithmelissa.com. Hey coaches and healers, it's time to feel supported in your business. Head on over to our free community to get access to my best resources for free. I'm talking marketing tips, business strategy, feedback, and so much more. Join now at magneticmarketingmastermind.com. See you there.